this week's challenge was brought to you by Jared um, and it's a good old scaffolding challenge which I always love a scaffolding uh, challenge myself so we've got all this information about when employees are scheduled to work but clearly we don't have all the dates in between those uh, scheduled sessions so what we want to do is we want to know uh, the very start of the year of the first scheduled uh, date so we can see that the first scheduled date is in June time I think um, and then the end date is in June time next year but we want it to go all the way to the end of 2023 so how can we do that so first of all I'm just going to duplicate the schedule the scheduled date field so that in my aggregate step I can do a minimum and a maximum scheduled date so that just gets me my June 2022 date and my June 2023 date and then I can get my start and end dates from there so uh, for my start date I'm first of all just truncating the date um, from my this scheduled date here to the start of the year so if I show you that then it's just a date trunk year of the scheduled date um, and that gives me the 1st of January 2022 and similarly I'm going to do exactly the same thing to this one for the uh, max one so for the end date it's just going to go to uh, the start of that year so I know that sounds counterintuitive but to me it made more sense to break it up into two steps so I've got the 1st of January 2023 for my end year as well okay so then for the end so for the start I'm done <laughs> I have uh, the start date there but for the end what I want to do is I want to first of all I want to add on a year to this date so um, before it changed sorry <laughs> I know that that's the end result we're getting to it said 1st of January 2023 so I want to add a year onto that that would make it the 1st of January 2024 and then I want to minus a day from it so reading inside out as usual with these calculations so adding on a year minusing a day that will get us to the 31st of, J of December uh, 2023 okay so then I can just get rid of the unnecessary fields I've just got my start date and my end date and that's dynamic that will work now for any data set that we read in so now I can scaffold my data set I can put in those new rows so I just have my start less than or equal to my end and I've just named that date for now and I'm just using um, every new row represents a new day okay um, so that's the scaffolding part done but it's not actually joined to any of our data yet so let's think about that part of it as well so one of the requirements was to make a full name field out of this data so going back to this data here adding in a clean step that creates a different branch then to create our full name we were doing our first name plus the space and then plus the last name then we're just getting a list of all of the names and employee IDs not including when they're scheduled okay so we just create our unique list here and then if we want to join together this list of all of our employees and all of these dates we create a dummy field in order to join those together so just literally a calculated field with the word dummy and the number one and that's the same for here as well I've added that in here too and we're just joining those together okay so that gives us all of those uh, dates and all of those employees so everyone is a potential in this data set for any date in between our start and end of um, our date scaffold okay and then we join it back to our initial data input um, so we don't want it just to be um, an inner join because that won't include that would just we'd be back to square one if we did that we wouldn't have any of the scaffold included so all of the scaffold is here the 6625 uh, rows are the scaffolded date where no one is scheduled on those dates okay um, so we do that not only on the employee ID but also on the dates there um, and we make it in my case a right join because I have um, you can see that this data set here the scaffolded data set is on the right uh, if you had joined it in a slightly different way then you might have your um, scaffolded data set on the left so just be careful make sure it matches make sure you have the join result coming out of 7300 rows and then we just need to tidy up get rid of our um, unnecessary fields do a little bit of renaming um, and make sure that we don't have too many nulls so before we get rid of 
or merge these two uh, fields together. We want to make sure that we create a scheduled field where any of these nulls are basically saying that the employee is not working on that day, not scheduled on that day. So we create a quick calculated field saying not is null scheduled date because is null will return true or false. So if the scheduled date is null, that means that they are not working. And so we have the not in front of it kind of to take that double negative there. Because otherwise, if it's null, that will come out as true. But we need the not there to make it false. So they're not scheduled there. OK, and then we just make sure that we also update our nulls here too. Um, we could have done that by merging. I just did an if null again um, to just say if that scheduled date is null, then take the value from the date and then got rid of the date field. And we are at our solution. Okay, so thanks again to Jared for creating this challenge for us and I hope you enjoyed watching.